Hey, 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 it's Triple A Wednesday. You might notice I've moved, so I have a new setup here that I'm still figuring out. You might see a few different backgrounds as I figure out where I'm going to film going forward. So thank you so much for bearing with me. But I wanted to make sure I took the time today to answer some of your questions, especially because I skipped last week. And as usual, we have some amazing questions on deck. Before we get into those questions, if you could just take a second and give me a thumbs up, it really helps out my channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider joining our amazing community. Every week, I either dive into a specific writing technique or I give insight into the publishing industry as that is my professional background. Okay, let's dive into the first question today. What is the average length of time between beginning a writing project and querying it to agents? There is no specific amount of time that it takes from starting your writing project to finally querying agents. Every project and every author is on a different timeline. It depends how quickly you write the book, which for some authors takes a matter of weeks, other authors takes a matter of years. It depends on how quickly you revise the book, which again, for some authors, this can happen in a matter of weeks. Others work on revisions for years, and of course, any amount of time in between. And the querying process can also take a indefinite amount of time. I would say that on average, most of the authors that I work with who are querying will have been working on that particular book project for somewhere between one to three years in some form from the very inception of the book to this point where they're querying. That's because it took them time to draft it and then they went through rounds of editing. Then maybe they worked on their query letter and workshopped that a bit before presenting the manuscript to literary agents. I do recommend taking as much time as it needs to put together a polished manuscript. Because when you reach out to agents, you really want to put your best foot forward and give it your best shot. I know that the entire book writing and publishing journey can really test your patience, but I would encourage you to try to be as patient as you can be and allow this process to take the time and the space that it needs to. Here's the next question. This is pretty specific, but I cannot decide the genre for my current work in progress. Its setting is a fictional land with kings and queens and castles inspired by medieval Italy. There is no magic, mythical creatures, or legends. The main character's main objective is political in nature, but there is a B story of romance. I took loose inspiration from a historical event from 480 BC, but it is not a retelling since it is quite different. I've watched so many videos and read so many Reddit posts, I get stuck between thinking it's either historical fiction or a low fantasy, or is it a romance? Let's figure out if we can determine your genre. The core differentiator between historical fiction or contemporary fiction for that matter, and fantasy comes down to whether we are in our real world or we are in an imagined world. Now, there are works of contemporary fiction published that take place in a made-up town, in a real geographical location. For instance, maybe a novel takes place in a small town in Texas, but that small town doesn't actually exist. That's not fantasy just because that town doesn't exist. The town is still based on a real place, so it's contemporary fiction. Since you said that your setting is inspired by medieval Italy, I would lean toward historical fiction, especially because you say there are no magical or mythical elements. It would make perfect sense to describe the setting as a fictional medieval Italian town, for instance. And if all other aspects of the story are pretty true to real history, then you can be confident presenting it as historical fiction. And if the romance subplot is a huge part of the novel, then you could present it as historical romance. But if it's really just a secondary storyline, I would keep it as historical fiction. Here's the next question. How to create tension in characters' relationships? Do you have any tips on how to write good relationships between characters that readers would like and in which stories readers would feel invested in? It's imperative that your characters' relationships come across as layered and nuanced and the dynamics between them ring true to the reader. Otherwise, if they don't feel authentic, it's unlikely that readers are going to be invested in that relationship and might not even be invested in the characters at all. So how do you write strong character relationships? I think it comes down to showing those moments where characters misunderstand or disappoint or betray each other because as humans, that's what happens in any real relationship, right? There are very few relationships that are smooth sailing and perfect all times of the day, every single day. So 
Don't be afraid to lean into those moments, big and small, where there is friction between the characters. That could be where one character misunderstood what the other one said and took offense or got upset because of it. Or that could be where there was a disagreement, either big or small, between two characters. Or in a more dramatic fashion, there could be a betrayal of one character of another, where one character is acting selfishly and not thinking of what the other character would feel. These are all very human experiences and interactions, right? So baking those into your character's relationships are going to make them feel more alive to the reader. And whenever you create tension between two characters, it's not only going to tell us a lot more about that relationship, but also about the individual characters, right? Another technique you can use for your main character is identifying the lesson that you want them to learn over the course of the story, or one lesson if there are multiple, and then seeing how you can create an interaction with another important character to them that causes that lesson to be learned, right? Lessons aren't just learned in a vacuum. They're typically learned in experiences that we have and interactions that we have. So how can they come across a specific experience or interaction with another character that teaches them that lesson. Before we get into the last question today, a quick plug for my newsletter website, chapter-break.com. I'm building this out as a resource for aspiring authors anywhere along the publishing journey. I'm doing exclusive interviews with literary agents and best-selling authors, and I really don't want you to miss out on all of their amazing insights. So if you give me your email, you're going to get all of that, plus my free story self-assessment worksheet, which is a quiz I designed to help you see your story from a new perspective and identify opportunities for improvement. The links to download my free story self-assessment worksheet and check out Chapter Break are in the description. Here's the final question today. Does my manuscript have to be flashy when I send the full version to a potential agent? I've been seeing a lot of bells and whistles from people on social media where they show their manuscripts, stylized chapter numbers, icons and emblems, the chapter name and number and the header, etc. I was curious if that's something agents are expecting or if that's something that I, the writer, don't need to worry about. You don't need to worry about making your manuscript look overly stylized or pretty when you're sending it to a literary agent. The standard Times New Roman, double-spaced, standard margins are totally fine, I promise you. It might be tempting to create artwork of some kind or add different stylized fonts or logos, but you really don't need to do that at the querying stage. I promise that a standard manuscript is totally fine because at the end of the day, the agent isn't looking for formatting or special icons or illustrations. They're looking for the quality of the story itself, which is going to come through via your text. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. If you have something you'd like to ask, drop it in the comments here and it will be added to my queue for my next session. Before you head out, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like these sessions. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget your free story self-assessment worksheet and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Happy writing.